Welcome to Public Forum, a community outreach program produced at North Idaho College on the shores of Lake Coeur d'Alene. Featuring guests from around the globe addressing a wide variety of subjects, Public Forum serves to educate and enlighten. Please join host and moderator, political scientist Tony Stewart, in welcoming today's guest. In January of this year, the Human Rights Education Foundation of Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and the Coeur d'Alene School District combined forces to be able to bring a very, very exciting individual to our community for a week during the Martin Luther King events. And while here he did this program with us, which we're airing now at this time, we welcome to the program Patrick Dunning, who's originally from Dublin, Ireland, and now lives in Portland, Oregon. Our guest explores the human spirit through art, music, and technology with his multifaceted project, and it's called the Signature Project. Its core is a huge 76 by 36 foot mural layered with hidden secrets. And it goes on and on to describe a remarkable thing he's doing and he's here today uh, with us to discuss that. If I may call you Patrick. Uh, Please do. Welcome to the program. It's, uh, thank you for taking time out to do that while here with our school district. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. And as always, I'm so pleased to have Janelle Burke, our regular panelist, and she will commence today's questioning with our guest. Patrick, it's a pleasure to have you here and to talk about your unique project. Can you explain for our viewers more of what your project is about? Um, do we have six months to do that? We don't. <laughs> uh, and, uh, it's really a painting that I painted about 10 years ago. And the painting comes from an experience I had when I was 17 years old. I used to do a lot of meditation and uh, true yoga, and I worked really hard at it. And one morning when I was meditating on the kitchen floor at, at about five o'clock in the morning, I had the most incredible experience. It was almost like outer space came inside of me. And I realized the absolute connectivity of everything in the universe. And for me, that was a very strong spiritual experience. It actually frightened me, it was so powerful. And believe it or not, I never practiced yoga again after that. But from that experience came the imagery that I use in this painting. Now, in the late 80s, when digital scanning became commercially available for, for the public, um, I was already working in public art at the time, and I was looking for ways to, to bring people into an artwork somehow. And I recalled the experience I had had that morning when I was 17, I painted a picture about it and then I photographed this picture, this painting, and had it scanned by a computer and the computer was instructed to, to look at my picture as if it was over a million bits of information. And because I only used 10 colors in the original painting, when the computer looked at my picture, it applied a number to every single pixel. So the computer actually gave me back my picture on 600 pages with over a million separate numbers. So this, this code book of numbers is the basis for the signature project. I use those numbers to determine the color of each signature when people sign one of the canvases. And it's a 20 year project for me that the, the finished painting will be an enormous mural 76 feet by 36 feet with over 1 million signatures of different people and uh, the technology behind that the computer scanning is is really what gives me the tool to go ahead and and go through that process i have had an opportunity to see part of it and, we'll, and this evening we'll see the rest of what you've done I believe at, in your progress on this project, you are now uh, have surpassed 300,000 signatures. That's right. I have about one, one third of the picture is finished after 10 years of working on it. When I started it first back in 1992, it was, it was kind of difficult to get people to, to, to add their name to this because they would ask me, well, you want a million signatures, how many do you have right now? And I'd say, well, I have 17, but if you, <laughs> if, if you add yours, I'll have 18. <laughs> and, uh, but it slowly, it slowly started to develop. And once I got the first piece of it finished where people could see a, a definitive part of the image beginning to appear, um, it, it started to speed up. Uh, for several years, I went to fairs and festivals and, and was literally hustling people 
uh, to sign their name to the picture. Many of the, I actually went to the, the, the state fair in Boise uh, several years ago, and I had a little booth. I had a canvas that people could sign their name on. I would stand there with pens and my little code book so I knew which color pen to hand them when they signed. So that's uh, important too, that the, 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 the different uh, segments have different colors of pins? That's right. It's almost like knitting a sweater. Okay. And you have a pattern and each stitch becomes one part of that sweater. Well, the tapestry or the sweater that I'm making is, is made by the different colored signatures joined together. So it kind of is a tapestry in a way. And uh, I would stand there at the booth and, and explain the project to people. And I never took uh, any commercial sponsorship to do this project. In fact, when I started it, I, I swore I would never take a penny from any commercial sponsor because I really was trying to bring people together in an artwork and I, I really didn't want it to be tainted by, by overt commercialism. So when people w were signing, I would ask them if they would like to donate a dollar or perhaps buy a postcard of the image or maybe even a t-shirt. And slowly but surely, it began to build momentum. And those little dollars and 50 cents is coming in gave me the funding to pay for my motel when I was on the road, put gas in my truck, paid for the canvases and the pens. So it's really coming from the people rather, rather than some commercial entity that, that would probably require their logo to be attached to it. But I, I would never do that. I would rather not finish the project then have it have it covered by a, a commercial entity. So it's really emerging with your great ability. It's emerging from the people. It's their project, not only from signing it, but also giving some contributions. And when it's finished, it'll be a people's work. E exactly, and it's not for sale either. Yeah. I, I mean, th this comes from the people. It's for the people, and it's, it's by the people. And uh, it's almost like my studio which I have a little one in Portland, you know, where I do all the rough work, but when the picture is actually growing and developing, it's happening right there. Uh, when people signed their name on the picture this week in Coeur d'Alene, the gymnasium in the school was my studio, or when somebody adds their name at a, at a, in a theater, that becomes my studio. So every time somebody adds their name to it, the picture is growing, and it's actually a living piece of art in that sense. And, and a traveling art work. As you and traveling know. art is well. one of the questions. I go back to Janelle, and that is the the way you're doing this, and the, the texture and the pins and all. It is fascinating, and I know you had 1,200 children this morning, fifth graders at Northern mm -hmm. College. This is our 18th year of that program, and and all of those children had signed this. I think it's about 1,400 that have done it while you're here, and you made a, a very fascinating point about how long it would last, how long their signature would exist as part of the artwork. Well, when I, when I started working on the artwork, I wanted to use materials that artists used. I didn't want to use ink that would fade in perhaps 10 or 20 years. So I did a lot of research and, and the squares, the, the canvases that people sign their name on are artists' canvases. They're four feet by four feet. And then when they take a pen, they write their name on the canvas in a, a very fine uh, definition spot. Uh, there's about 7,000 per canvas, and there's 171 canvases, so there's over a million signatures. But they use a pen that has acrylic paint in it. And we, we all know that, that these materials, canvas and, and acrylic paint, lasts for hundreds of years. Uh, you can still go into museums today and see paintings that were done a 1,000 years ago. Uh, so the materials I'm using are designed to last, and it's, it's sometimes interesting to see the reaction of children when you tell them that once they sign their name on this picture and, and the, the acrylic paint dries in about 30 seconds, that their name, if the picture is looked after, if it's taken care of, should last a thousand years. There's no reason why it won't do that. Um, and it's funny to see them realizing for the very first time in their life, they're realizing their own mortality because they realize, I won't be around a thousand years from now. But something of me will be. But something of me will be. And they also, that, well, they're realizing that their mortality in a kind of a gentle way. Okay. Uh, but it's also interesting to see how they suddenly realize the, the sequence of generations within a family how their grandparents came before them, 
how their parents came before them and how now they're growing into that position and they will have children who will live on after them. So it's a very gentle way of, of kind of presenting them with the fact that you're not going to be around forever. At that age, that's difficult to realize. Janelle Burke. So the images are made up of many, many signatures, but what are the images? Well, the overall image um, is a cosmic landscape. Okay. At the very, very center of the painting is a white heart, and that white heart is in the center of a bright yellow sun that's bursting out with energy. And then in the four corners I have a, a suspended earth, both in daylight and in shadow. Above that is a crescent moon. Um, inside the crescent moon is, is a, a flying barn swallow bird, a, a motif of a bird. On the other side there's a scattering of, of, of sparkling stars. And then below that there's a spiral galaxy. So what I was trying to do was create a cosmic landscape that included the place we live, the Earth, but also had the thing that gave us our heat and our light and our energy, the sun, upon which all life depends on here. And then to go beyond that, go into the stars and the galaxies and create this cosmic landscape. And when we look at the cosmos, we're looking at it in a very narrow part of the spectrum. We're looking at it using our eyes in sunlight, we see red, yellow, blue, green, and all of those colors are in the picture. And when you look at my artwork, you see those things. You see the earth, the moon, the sun, the stars, the galaxies. But when you shift off that spectrum, when you look at my artwork using ultraviolet light, which is another part of the spectrum that we don't naturally see, when you look at the, the artwork using ultraviolet light, a whole other image appears. In fact, an image appears with its arms outstretched and the heart in the middle of the sun is right in the very center of the chest. So when you look at this picture using those two methods, normal sunlight and ultraviolet light, the image then gets a little more complex. We see the figure superimposed over the cosmic landscape. If you shift off to the spectrum again into the X-ray, uh, area, and you look at the picture using x-rays, which I, which I show people during the presentation, another set of images appear. Those images I have hidden onto the back of the picture using uh, a liquid metal paint. And, and when I create these images in the metal paint, when they dry, I paint over them, they get covered up. So the only way you'll see them is through x-rays. And one of those images turns out to be the face of my father. I painted his face using this metallic paint. His face is made up from 2,000 little dots, and those dots are actually Morse code. Now, I was a sailor for 10 years when I lived back in Ireland, so I'm kind of familiar with Morse code. But I painted his face in Morse code because I didn't want it just to look like my dad, my father. I also wanted his face to have a message and what I did was, when I was artist in residence at the Museum of Science in Portland in OMSI, they had a submarine at the museum that you could take tours on. And they actually had an active radio room on the submarine. And I got permission to go down into the radio room where they keep all the Morse code equipment. And I tapped out the message that was in my father's face. It was broadcast. And I made a recording of the, of the Morse code being tapped out. And I played that as part of the show. The Morse code, when you decode it, is telling you the notes, the melody, the tempo, the instruments to use for a piece of music that my brother, Brian Dunning, wrote. It's a beautiful little Irish lullaby. My brother's a professional musician who lives in Ireland. And my brother wrote that piece of music, that lovely little Irish lullaby. He wrote it for his son when his son was just born. A beautiful piece of music, and it's been played today at the, at the assembly we were at this morning. The thing is, my father, whose face is made from this Morse code of music, never got to meet his grandchild. My father died just before the grandchild was born. So what I did was I took the music written by my brother for his son, turned the music into words, turned the words into Morse code, arranged the Morse code into the shape of my father's face and then put his face 
into one of the panels. So my father literally becomes the music for the child that he never met. And the music for the child written by my brother becomes my father. And that was my personal way of bringing the two of them together for the very first time. As she described this, and I partially viewed it, it's, it makes one somewhat speechless. Uh, the, the the power of the colors and the images and how you use the technology. And I guess my next question would be, are you the first person, and I, I don't know what to talk about in the world of music or art or technology, it's, it's all come together. Are you the first person to do a project like this? I don't know. I think I may be the first person to possibly use signatures within an artwork. Because when you think about it, all I'm doing is just orchestrating it. Other people are providing the piece of color with their names. And really, when you think about it, a signature, what you do is you take this drawing tool, you create a flourish of line, which is your name, but it's a work of art because each one is unique. And you can actually go in and look at signatures and say, well, I think that person might be a little untidy or something, or this person is definitely leaning towards engineering. <laughs> so it does give a little expression of who you are. Uh, and whether I'm the first to do all of that, I think I, think I may be. But up to a year ago, I, I, a year and a half ago, I didn't play any music, but I actually took up playing guitar, especially for this, for this project. And again, as, as part of the performance, because now this painting that I started with 10 years ago has turned into theater, because that's how I present it now, an hour-long presentation on stage. So I'm really an actor, but I do a little bit of music, and I've already done the painting, and then there's the computer so code. So the whole project is evolving, and you're expanding in the process. And it's changing all the time, and people keep asking me, well, Where's this picture going to go when it's finished? It's huge. <laughs> and I was thinking, just to take it one step further, I've got 171 squares that make up the entire painting. Each square is four foot by four foot. So it's several thousand square feet. When you take 20 of those squares that have about 140,000 names on it, and you put them together almost like a sandwich, those 20 squares make a perfect cube Nine cubes make up the entire picture, and nine cubes, when you put them on top of each other, make up a square. So I was thinking maybe I could turn the painting into a sculpture, so that when it's finished, you walk into a room, you see this square-like sculpture, but that's actually the painting that opens up into the panels, and then the panels open up into the hidden images, and there's music and, and science and technology and all of that thing in there. Uh, and it, it's constantly changing. But all the time I'm putting stuff into this, I'm, I'm also leaving a little door open for people to create something themselves with the tools that I'm providing. One of the squares I have hidden inside a thing called a theremin. Have you, have you heard of a theremin? A theremin is really interesting. Leon Theremin came to America from Russia in the 1920s. This guy was a genius. And he invented a musical instrument that can be played without touching it. The closer you go to this machine, the higher the sound of the musical instrument. Uh, the Beach Boys used it in a song called Good Vibrations. There's a kind of a, a high-pitched sound in that sound, and they use a theremin. Or when you see a, a horror movie and the swamp monster is coming out, of <laughs> and they have that kind of whistling sound, well, that's a theremin. Well, I had one built into one of the squares that people signed their name. So the painting is also a musical instrument. You can approach it with your, with your body's magnetic field, and it sets off a sound. The closer you go, the higher the sounds. But you can actually play it with your, with your own body's magnetic field. So I'm having a lot of fun with this, and <laughs> maybe I hear a theremin right now, do I? <laughs> you need to live another hundred years to, I watch, hope so. this, to watch this evolve. Uh, this week that we have, that, we, that you were, you're here in January when we're taping the program, and it's our Human Rights Week, uh, and it's a very special time for our North Carolina College and our school districts and our human rights organizations. That's why you were also invited by our wonderful friend, uh, Pam, Pratt, Pam the, Pratt, the principal of one of our schools, uh, and she coordinates this every year. Uh, give us the human rights message, the spirit. Obviously, what you're already saying is obviously it's a, it's a 
bringing of people together from all types of backgrounds and lives, but uh, can you give us the, the essence of that uh, human spirit message in your work? Well, people all over the world have many things in common. And part of the show that I do on stage, when the music that my brother wrote begins to play, on the screen is projected the faces of many of the people who right. signed this picture over the last 10 years. Uh, people with dark skin, people with light skin, people with long hair, people with no hair. Uh, those faces on the screen begin to, to morph into each other. Uh, it shows an old woman's face who signed the picture a couple of years ago and then just softens into the face of a young child. And for me, the experience of doing this project and meeting all of these different people really reinforces my belief that we look for ways to, to define our individuality. And a signature is one of those ways we do it. Sure. But when you bring all of those signatures together and create this cosmic landscape, this image, it also underlines the fact that we're, we're part of this bigger thing in life. And for me, that's one of the strongest messages, which, believe it or not, I didn't intend to push very hard. For me, it was, you know, I was kind of really into the technology and look at all of these numbers, isn't it cool? And yet people were picking up on, on the human message, the, the, the message that diversity is probably one of the most precious things we have. And one of the reasons I came to America 10 years ago is because I couldn't do this project anywhere else. I'm from Ireland and 99% of the people you meet on the street are Irish and there's very little diversity in there. And in many ways that, that's good for a culture to kind of spring up, which the Irish culture is very strong in that respect. But I came to America really to do this project because I couldn't find that diversity of people anywhere else. And it's funny, I've had Palestinian people sign their name beside Jewish people and both of them knew they were going beside each other and there was absolutely no problem with it. For me, when you put two signatures down on a piece of paper and you look at both of them, you can't tell who's the poor person, who's the rich person who's the black person or who's the white person. It's something that brings us together and has a common thread running right through it. Thank you, Janelle Burke. That was a very powerful statement. Um, when you sign, do you know where your signature is going to be in this whole scheme? Do you, do you, could you go back later and look and say, that's where I am? Well, I tell people the general area where their name is going to be and when people ask me, well, where is this going to end up when it's finished so that I can go and find my name? Um, I tell them that right now I'm just one person with very limited resources. And because I'm not taking commercial sponsorship, there's only so much I can do with the picture. I would love to map out every single spot and, and say, well, Tony Stewart is a uh, number 628,002 and go in on a computer and actually find his name right there. I can't do that yet, but I'm hoping as the project develops that I will be able to tag each name and have people go back and find their name. But even though this is a physical painting, even though this really exists in reality, even though if you take an x-ray and you look at a, one of the squares, you'll see an image or use ultraviolet light, you'll see another image. I designed the whole project to go on DVD, on disc so that when you load it into a computer, you can bring the overall image up on the computer screen, then on your computer you can zoom in and read every single name in the painting, 1,008,016 of them. At the click of the mouse, you can bring up the ultraviolet light image. At the click of a mouse, you can go in and look at the x-rays, click the mouse again and you hear the music. So it's designed to go very, comfortably into that whole digital realm. And it's also designed to go very comfortably into the, into the human realm, the signatures, the hands-on uh, element of the project. So I'm trying to have the two of them go together hand in hand. When resources become more available, I would love to be able to, to 
provide people with the opportunity to go back and revisit what they did, where they put their name, and uh, hopefully that will happen if, if the resources come. And you also have indicated that both adults and children love your project, and so where can they be in touch with you if they want to be a part of it? Well, I do have a website, and may I give out the website? Oh, please. The website address is www.signatureproject.com, signature project being one word. And when you go online, what will happen is the image will come up on the screen, um, it will automatically zoom in on a, on a few signatures and zoom out again. So you really get a sense of what it's all about. Some of the other images will load in automatically. But in about three weeks from now, and this is, the, this is late January. So 2000, the show will air in March, so then it'll be ready, I guess. Yeah, uh, and you can go in and, and you'll be able to see where the next performance is going to be held. Right now I'm mostly going to schools, colleges, and some adult conferences. I did a little show in Portland, Oregon for a hundred kindergartners. They loved it. Loaded up my truck, went straight to Las Vegas, and I put on a show at the Riviera Hotel for a thousand technicians from Japan who didn't even speak English, and they loved it, so <laughs> it crosses many barriers. That, that, that's that connection that we're yes. talking about. But again, it's www.signatureproject.com, because we have viewers that I know that want to do that. I've, they're indicating to me that we're out of time, but I want to say to you, Patrick Dunning, that we've done shows for 31 years, and this is one of the most unique things we've ever done. And we've never, your talents are uh, amazing, and we thank you for coming to Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and to spending this week with us. You've been very generous with your time, and the organizations that uh, brought you here are all very grateful. It's been a tremendous success, and today we watched 1,200 fifth graders be delighted again, and when you came out on stage, they certainly recognize you from the week's work that you've done with them. They, they also were very special and you've added so much to what we uh, believe that, that one should be doing. And again, thank you and good luck in the future in what you're doing. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed this program as much as we've enjoyed bringing it to you with Patrick Dunning on his signature project, which is a very exciting project. Uh, next week we'll turn to another subject and we hope you'll be with us at that time. Until then, please have a good week. I am Tony Stewart. Recorded on the campus of North Idaho College, Public Forum is the longest running in-house college production on PBS. Each episode is pre-recorded live and is an educational outreach from North Idaho College. Please join us at this same time next week for another edition of Public Forum on this public television station.